Hi class, it's Mr. Woodbury, and I've got a couple of questions about a problem like this, so I thought I'd put together a video to help you all out. This is in section 2.1, and eventually it has to do with side-by-side -side bar graphs. And StatCrunch doesn't make those, so I'm going to show you how to use your intuition to figure out which graph they're, they're giving you is the right one in that case. Also, um, I'm going to show you how to use a bar graph to help with relative frequencies. So let's get started. Uh, we've got some age groups list, listed on the left-hand side, and then we've got the number of males and number of females in thousands in each of those age groups. And so we want to start with the frequency distribution of the males who receive tickets, and we're supposed to round these to three places. So one thing you could do by hand is add up all the males and then divide each number by the number of males. But that gives you a lot of chances for a careless error to show up, uh, miss misaddition, misdivision, transposing numbers, etc. So I'd rather let StackCrunch do this work for me. So I'm going to open up the data in StackCrunch. There's a little uh, double rectangle next to the data set. If I click on it, I want to select the option open in StackCrunch. Okay, so again, the age groups, these categories are in the first column, the number of males in the second, the number of females in the third. So I'm going to make a bar graph for the number of males. This is under graph, bar plot, with summary. So we have to use with summary because we have categories and how many are in that category rather than a gigantic column of data. All right, so I'm going to click on with summary. The categories are the age groups and the columns I'm going to go with males. Now I need a relative frequency. So where it says type, switch that to relative frequency. And um, order, I'm gonna always go back to the worksheet order just to make sure everything stays in the order that will keep it consistent in the problem. And I'm gonna ask for the value above the bar. It makes the graph easier to read. Okay, click compute. And there's our bar graph, and I can enter these relative frequencies into the problem. Now in this problem, it asks for three decimal places, and I have three decimal places above each number, perfect. But if I needed four decimal places, all I have to do is put the mouse over the bar, and it gives me the frequency out to eight decimal places. So here, it would be 0.3158 if I needed four places. You'll see that in the chapter review. Okay, how can I get this over to the homework problem? Let's try it like this. We'll split the screen, whoops. And I just have to type the values that I see. So again, 16 to 25 was 0.316. 26 to 35, 0.224. Whoops, I did not tab. 0.224, next 0.193. Notice I haven't been typing the zeros and StackCrunch will understand that, but you can also type them as well, 0 0.112, 0 0.155. Check my answer, well done. So now we need to do the same thing for females. And I can make one small change to the graph I already have, get females by clicking on options, edit. And I just wanna switch the counts from males to females. So this will make the same graph for me, but with females. Um, notice when the graph is at this size, it doesn't show the decimals above some of these, but if I expand it to full screen, it does. So for these five, it's 0 0.292, 0 0.225, 0 0.182, 0 0.107, and 0.194. So the first two parts, that's how we used a bar graph to fill in a frequency distribution. Now for the third part, StackCrunch wants us to make a side-by-side -side relative frequency bar graph, except that StackCrunch doesn't make those. So what we've got to figure out is which of these three is the correct one. Um, the one in blue is the graph for males, and the one in red is the graph for females. So looking at just the first two bars, in A and B, 
it's higher for the males, but in C, it's higher for the females. And if we go back and take a look at these numbers, it's supposed to be higher for males. So automatically, we can throw out C as an option. Now, where is the big difference between these two graphs? Well, if I look at the third grouping, in A, they're basically equal, but in B, there are more males than females. So if we scroll up, let's take a look at that third group, 36 to 45. It's 0.193 for males, 0.182 for females. That's relatively close. It's not as far off as this one is. Uh, one other thing that I wanted to show you here, uh, I can't zoom in on this one. In some graphs, you can zoom in. Uh, take a look at the height of this blue bar in B. It's above 0.2, but we know up here that it's only supposed to be 0.193, so it's supposed to be below that. The only answer that makes sense here is A, and we can check that. So you have to use a little intuition. Use your answers from part A and B to go back to figure out uh, what the right graph is in part C. All right, that's Mr. Woodbury. If you have questions on this or others, just send me a message through Canvas, and I'll be seeing you shortly.